Hey everybody, this is Rustin Rose with Metalholic Magazine and of course Metal Nation Radio and with us today the amazingly gifted Cobra Page of Cobra and the Lotus. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much. And you guys just finished up the Euro- European tour, I believe. How did, how was the reception? We did. Uh, it was mostly UK, and then we had one date in Switzerland, one date in Belgium at Grass Pop Festival, and it was killer. It was a great tour. You know, the UK is growing, and the festivals were great. Swiss show was great. Uh, and I don't know what it is, but Europe has just never given up on its love for heavy metal. It's just been a constant over there, and the fans are just rabid. Yeah, they certainly haven't, and thank God for it. It's a completely different experience when you're in Europe than it is uh, in North America, for instance. That being said, the fans, when they find you in North America, are pretty crazy. So there's good people everywhere, you know? Absolutely. Well, let's talk about new stuff because you've got coming out here in a little bit the brand new EP coming up at the end of August, Words of the Prophets. Tell us a little bit about that whole idea, because it's all Canadian artists like you are, some of the classics. How did that sort of unfold? Yeah, you know, it all started because we have been off the road for a while, and I wanted to do something together with the band that was paying tribute to some of the nostalgic music from our childhood, and really the start of what developed our taste and a lot of those bands were those classic rock bands. It was, was the first thing that we heard on the radio. It was the first thing our parents played for us. And so it was uh, a really fun and great way to show our respect as well to those roots and be proud of where we come from and also hopefully maybe bring some of that music to uh, the world again, maybe even places that it hadn't reached. I got to tell you, thanks for this. I've had Sign of the Gypsy Queen stuck in my head for like three days. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> you know, That's my favorite, I think. <laughs> you wake up in the middle of the night and you're, you're singing the song in your head. It's like, go away. <laughs> it's just stuck there. So, wow. <laughs> Well, now tell us, because, you know, obviously there's so much great talent that's come out of out of Canada. Metal Nation, the radio station that I'm with, that, that's based out of Canada. But you, you picked all Canadian artists like yourself, but there are so many to choose from. How did you pick these five and, of course, the subsequent songs? Because each of these bands has so many amazing choices to go with. I know there were so many different options, and it started with a massive Dropbox folder, and then I really just started weeding out, okay, what was super impactful to me, what was important to me, and what are some different flavors that we can also introduce and ways to showcase the band differently, the things we can do. Like, Sign of the Gypsy Queen was fun because everyone can sing, the guys can sing, and it was cool to bring back some of those harmonies, and Triumph, of course, we just absolutely love. It gets everyone jacked up. Let It Ride is something that makes me feel happy, Rush was so fun because it was such a challenge, and we we can't really find a lot of Rush covers on YouTube, so we thought, what the hell, we have to do this. And there's like nine different tempo changes in that song. It's just ridiculous. But uh, we, uh, yeah, we, we wanted to do it and, and see if we could do it. And Black Velvet is specifically chosen because Alana Miles really was supportive when I was younger and starting to just come into my career she really was encouraging and uh we had done a beatles tribute show together and she just said some really kind words and um i thought this artist was very underrated in some ways because i think that she has such a cool sound and i love her rasp she's got so much power but in such like a a very cool calm bluesy tone and what was also fun about these songs is that people we asked our facebook page what songs do people want to see us do? It, when it was all metal, it was like, do Learen, do um, Exciter, you know? It was it was all metal bands, and I didn't want to do that because it was exactly what people expected from us. I think you did such a phenomenal job of picking the songs on this, because you didn't even pick the ones that you might expect from each band. Lay it on the line. 
is my favorite triumph song but most people would have gone with like a magic power or you know allied forces or rock and roll machine oh, you know, yeah. something like that you know you, you pick the off bto song and and even rush you know the spirit of radio is not the song most bands would have picked you said that spirit of radio was a little bit challenging but for you as a vocalist i mean you're breathing life into rick emmett alana miles getty lee did you have any struggle finding the right emotive voice for any of these songs yeah, I totally did. Uh, Rush was really, really um, natural feeling. I think that me and Getty Lee maybe have a similar range. And it was so fun. And Let It Ride was a little challenging because there's so many high notes and it's kind of got some gospel stuff. But at the same time, it was fun because I never get to sing like that. And so I got to do some really high Mariah Carey notes, and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. You know, I was having so much fun. And I got to put some grit into Triumph, which I don't usually put into our songs, and it just came out with that material because it's got that mood. Alana Miles was particularly intimidating for me to sing because I just love, love the original version, and I... uh, love her voice and her attitude and i was so nervous i like stressed over it i think for two days that song took me the longest to record but in the end i just had to surrender and be like yeah well this is my voice my voice is clean and i have to just accept that because this is a cobra and the lotus version of it you know right. well and then you did a great vintage photo shoot for that song and and put together the video you look like you were having a lot of fun doing that Yeah, that video was really fun because I wanted to uh, do something we'd never done before. I'm always headbanging in our videos, and um, I love that, but I thought it was time to uh, maybe even show a little more of my femininity, but uh, not lose the edge, and so we thought, hey, let's do black and white tribute to Marilyn Monroe because that way we can keep it tasteful and it's still in character for me and... It was so nice to do something just uh, different and a little more artsy. And you worked once again with Johnny Kay, who did High Priestess. What is it about that connection that works so well for you guys? Man, Johnny is just such an he's such a an interesting person. Um, the way he operates is uh, it's very he's very distracted, but it, it's also one of the beautiful things about him because he's so attentive to so many different things, and he just. He uh, is, I think he's like the the guitar tone master, which was also important for this song because the guitars obviously needed some different tones. And um, he just really inspires me. He's very challenging. Uh, He can be quite blunt, but he's not rude. He's a kind man, but he he gets right to the point and he will push me and he will tell me if something sounds like shit or if it's not good enough and he'll just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And I need people to do that to me because otherwise I won't know how to improve and he just uh really inspires me to think different ways as well i've I've heard him referred to as the (laughs) taskmaster yeah that sounds right he he just gets like a bee in his bonnet and he has to solve it you know um is as he goes as far as just like uh changing the pickups and the bass guitars we're going to use and Everything has to stop. The world stops. No, I'm going to change the pickups right now because this is going to give it this much micro more of an edge or a tone that sounds like this, and he has to do it. And the details, I think, really, really great when the music happens. Sometimes it's frustrating in the moment, but it's really worth it in the end. Yeah, he's amazing producer, amazing albums that have come out of Groove Master. So why don't we take a quick break and we'll listen to Black Velvet by Cobra and the Lotus here on Metal Nation Radio. We'll be back on the flip side with more from Cobra Page, talking about the new EP and what's next for the band. And we're back here on Metal Nation Radio. I am Rustin Rose, your host from Metal Holic Magazine, and with us Cobra Page talking about the new EP, Words of the Prophets. I know you picked these five songs. Were there were there any others that you actually recorded for this or considered recording that didn't end up making the cut? No, um, this was it. This I it became very specific in my mind what had to be done, and also the artists are so different from each other. So that was you know that was like the point. Uh, it was funny because some of the guys wanted to do more Triumph because they love Triumph so much, and I love Triumph too. But then it would have been like a Triumph cover album. So right. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we went in with a goal to do five, and if we weren't satisfied, we would have dropped one, but we just enjoyed doing all of them so much that we're going to leave it, you know, the way it is. No, like I said, it came out wonderful. So let's move forward here a little bit. It's been a year since High Priestess came out. Are you starting to write and look ahead to making the next full studio album? We are, uh, yes, absolutely. We do have studio time booked already. Uh, February 8th is the first day we'll be going into the studio, and um, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be great. I'm so excited to work on another album again. Well, and you've had some great experiences this last year. You got to do that massive tour with Kiss and Def Leppard, so you've now done a lot of club stuff. You've now been on a huge arena tour like that, and I know you played with Judas Priest and stuff before, but that had to be an astonishing experience. That really was uh, inspiring in a way that I couldn't have been inspired if I never had the opportunity to do that. I think the guys felt the same way. Um, because we really saw some craftsmanship and um, magic moments that I haven't seen in some of the music in our generations, it, even ours. Like, just, just things that they do. Like, that made me inspired to, for instance, why we covered Gypsy Queen, because I saw Def Leppard playing, and they're singing, and they're, oh, they're just so good live, and the show was so good, and the Kiss show was so good, and, and man, like, they really give everything they've got, you know, I mean, it's an expensive concert, but they, they give you the show, they give you everything, I mean, uh, Vivian Campbell, such an inspirational guitar player to a lot of us, and he was sick, he was so sick with cancer on right. that tour, and he, he got out there every single show, and we could see him coming behind the stage and holding his head in his hands because he was so ill. And they would go out and start the encore, and he'd still be sitting there, and then he would pull all the life in him he had, and he would just stand up, and he'd go, and he'd just stand in one spot, but he would make it, you know, for the fans. And I, I thought it was so incredible. So there were so many things we learned, and they were good people. They told us stories that were really good to hear because they gave us courage to have faith and persevere. Right. And and it's it's interesting cuz you know Gene Simmons said that rock was dead or close to dead. <laughs> but yeah. but I think there there are finally and, and I think to some extent it was on life support for a number of years and obviously the music industry is still in disarray, you know, with all the stuff we've got going on with the illegal downloading and there's just too many bands putting out too much garbage. But there are some great upcoming new bands that have some, some amazing talent, you know, yourself included, and the Hailstorms, and bands like that that are really breathing life back into this again. And it's important to keep that faith because we're going to need that to see rock and roll through to the other side, I think. so. Absolutely. And I, like you said, there's so much talent and out there, and... uh I, I really don't think it's dead r at all. I think, you know, there's more choice these days uh, with the way DJing is available and just things that weren't weren't in existence in the previous generations that I wasn't even a part of. And so I'm not even used to another era. Like, I'm used to the world that we are starting our career in, and that is the digital world. So it's just a different monster. I think, like, it's a different machine and it's the one i'm learning to operate it's tough no matter what kind of art you do and that's the bottom line and you really have to just stick it out that's a big part of it uh, bands will drop off because they it becomes too tough and they lose faith but maybe like a year later they would have passed a breaking point but they just can't hang in there you know and gene is a funny guy you know because he says so many things that are controversial i think to cause controversy because <laughs> He says rock is dead in the public, but then he was so supportive to our band. He didn't want to uh, change the integrity or anything. He just wanted us to be exactly what we were. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's like something that is far and few between with some major label deals as well. They want to change your music. They want to shape you into a commercial machine. 
Well, Gene's always been a polarizing character, and that's what we love about him. So, <laughs> Yes, I guess love and hate from the world, which is, it's all good. It's all good for him. <laughs> all right, so you guys, uh, like I said, just finished up over in Europe. Now you're going to start out doing a North American West Coast run um, in August. Uh, what's on tap after that? Yeah, well, um, after we do this American tour, which will be on the... Uh, the west coast mainly and a little bit inland and then uh we'll have a couple weeks and then we we do the full extensive european tour and that Ah. will be a solid month about 20 shows it's about it's yet to be announced but it's coming it's been confirmed for us uh we're just waiting for the band we're supporting to put out the announcement first but we'll be in europe for september and october Fantastic. Since we started this all off talking about cover songs for the the new EP, Words of the Prophets, Judas Priest has always been a huge influence on you. What Priest song might we one day hear the band cover? Oh, oh, man. Actually, we always talk about covering Hell Patrol because it just gets everyone jazzed. My favorite song is Nightcrawler, but uh, I don't think I'd attempt to do that just because... I don't know. Some things you got to just leave them the way they are. (laughs) That song is so good. Um, But Hell Patrol might just come out on the road with us one day. That would be fun. So, and uh, speaking of songs that pump you up and everything, sort of our pointless question of the week. Do you have sort of a go-to album or go-to song that you listen to when you're maybe having a bad day or just need something to lift you up and get you pumped? Actually... I have a band song. We have a song that's been pumping us up for the last little while, and uh, it's really goofy, but we're completely obsessed, and it makes everyone crazy. I mean, as in us, the five people nuts. So ridiculous, but the Hoffman, we've been listening to True Survivor (laughs) by David Hasselhoff. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's, like, punching the air. We're like, yeah, let's go. We're true survivors, and then like shit is hitting the fan on the road, and we we put the song on, and we're like, nope, nope, we're true survivors. Let's keep going. Cobra Page of Cobra and the Lotus getting ready to kick off a West Coast tour in about a month. You got a little downtime, hopefully, to relax before you have to head back out there. Thanks so much for taking a little bit of time to talk with us about the new EP, and we're so excited for what the next album is going to bring. Hey, thank you, thank uh, you so much for the support. Absolutely, take care, and we'll talk with you again soon. Yeah, hope to see you in the flesh. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. Bye. (laughs) Bye.